Welcome guys back to the channel and this video if you are still soldering your wires and your cables um, this video is for you if you're planning on also paneling off the back of your rack um, this video is also for you and if you're a DJ and you want to put jacks like inlet and outlet jacks on your console case or your carry case uh this video is for you every sound person should own one of these Desire to get a higher life, it's a no brand on road. Desire to get a higher, don't limit it, you're a bubble boat. Desire to get a higher life, it's a no brand on road, bully be. Life is a subject, ain't not an object, take a full control. Alright, so. Like I said earlier, welcome back to the channel. Hey, I uh, wanna say before I start, thank you to everyone that has subscribed, everyone that has sent me a comment, uh, hit like, everyone that had sent me emails also. A lot of people seem to appreciate me being upfront and open with it. And like I said, each one teach one, and I'm here to show you what I have learned and how I do my setup, okay? Um, but with that said, Let's dive into it. Now, a lot of people wants to um, panel off the back of their sound system and they want to make it neater where they don't have to open up the case to run wires and all that stuff. They want to also have their wires neatly organized. And we're gonna do a different video about organizing inside your wrap. Um, but this video is about actually soldering. I don't like soldering and I stopped soldering maybe about four years now. Um, because I'm not good at soldering and soldering is not a hundred percent you pick up distortion from your solders sometimes your solders lose connection so you be in the middle of a party and your wire falls off the <laughs> and you're trying to figure out what happened to the signal maybe your speaker stopped playing left side right side whatever it might be or all of a sudden the, the, the sound would get completely distorted and you don't know where the distortion is coming from so I don't like soldering and I stopped soldering years ago. And ever since I stopped it, it was the best decision I've ever made. So I'm here to show you what I've done. Now my first thing, the first thing I did was I started using these and um, I'm gonna hold it up in front so you guys can see it. I started using these, these are RCA uh, panel mount RCA jacks. And these goes on Panels like this, or you could even bolt, bolt, put a hole in your case if you want to go directly on the case. But if you want to mount it on um, a panel, they sell these in one, two, and three space panels with however amount of uh, holes you want in it for however amount of jacks you want. You can mount them from the inside, which I like. It's a nice, cleaner finish. Very nice, very clean or you could mount it from the outside, which you'll, you'll, if you mount it from the outside, you'll see the square, the square outline of that jack. So I don't necessarily like this version, but some of them you can only mount this way. Some of them you can only mount from the inside. Uh, prime example of it, these come in all different types. I don't use these anymore. These are the ones that, if you notice, if you look, if you look on the on the end, I have a piece of wire soldered on here. This is the type that you would normally solder. The neutral, the grounds, and the live in the middle, and your RCA jack just come on the outside like this. And I used to have problems with these too, so that's why I stopped using these. I don't use these anymore. So I got a whole bunch of these laying around in a chunk somewhere. So if anybody needs won't need them, just let me know. I'll I'll send them to you. Um, but when I started using, let me take out the bag. I started using these bad boys. I started using these bad boys right here. So, this is an XLR female in, XLR male, 
out and it basically mounts on the panel from the from the inside like this or I mean from the outside like this or from the inside like this which you know already I like this look it's a lot cleaner okay with this jack let me move this out of the way with this jack you don't need to be soldering anything all you need is a XLR cable in your rack that plugs here and go to the equipment and when you're ready to hook this up you just plug another XLR cable from the outside like this now I'll show this to you when we go to my rack so you can see my setup on my rack and they come in XLRs I have them with RCAs Got RCA in, RCA out. I also have them in USB, in, out, USB. Um, this is Ethernet, in, Ethernet out. Um, trying to find a different type here for you. Okay, and for my XLR, for the XLR guys, um, this is a male in, female out. This is a female in, male out. So you could get it, set it up for your microphone or for line input, whichever one you want. It's very easy, very simple. And I've had these for four years and I've never, never replaced one. They all work perfectly, no issues whatsoever. I've never replaced one of them. Just laying out the different types so you can see what they are. This one won't stand up, so I'm gonna stand it upside down. Okay. And that's it. Now, if you do it like that, you don't have to solder anything. Now when you go to my rack, you're gonna see I have plastic labeling on mine. You could buy those, those are accessories that you could add to it, label each input, so you know which is your mic, or which is your main line in, or which is your sub out, which is your, which is your auxiliary recorder, or whatever you want, however you want that layout to be. And this will eliminate all that wiring at the back of your rack. I hate seeing that, so that's why I'm doing this video, so you guys could, you know, start needs up your project too, right? <laughs> okay. So if you use these, and I, I'm going to have links in the description where you can find these on Amazon or on Parts Express, because where I shop, I shop either Amazon or I shop Parts Express. They're, they're on eBay too, you can go on eBay and get them as well. Alright, and that's for the jacks. Now, when you come to the speaker end and you're using speak ons, would it be your four, your four pin or your eight pin uh, speak on connectors? Some guys solder here. They'll take a piece of wire, put it onto the end with a solder and solder it on there and it's permanent. Now what happens is sometimes, I guess with, it, with the eat, or the vibration or the movement of the speaker boxes, whatever the case is, whenever you're, sh whenever you're moving from one point to the next, it falls off, that soldering falls off. Now all of a sudden your low mid speaker or your high mid speaker is not working and you're trying to figure out why, but you can't figure it out until you open up the box. You won't find it until you open up the speaker box and see the wire itself that is off. I don't use, I don't use solders on these either. Instead, I use these connectors. These bad boys right here. You clamp the wire on here and you just slide them on. They slide right over it, fits perfect, no issue. This one's kind of tight, I don't want to force it on there. But it slides right over it, no matter what, which one, whether it be the four pin 
or it'd be the eight pin. It slides right on it. Um, this one that I use has a lock-in pin in it. So you have to use like a pointy tip, whether it be a flat uh, Phillips screwdriver or a small screwdriver, something with a point to kind of pull this back so you can release it. So when it goes on there, it locks so it won't come back off. And uh, just make sure you put an insulated uh, tubing over it as well. That would help to protect it as well. Now, I've seen people use the connectors, these connectors here. I've seen people use those and then still put a little bit of solder on there to make sure it doesn't move. But that locking pin is pretty good. It's very hard to come off. So no matter how many kind of vibration you put on it, or how, how hard you tug on it, it won't come out very easily. You better, you, you, you're, more, you're more likely to destroy the wire before you would destroy the, 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 the connector itself. Okay, so soldering it is not necessary. And that is how I get rid of soldering. Those are the main reasons why I would solder. I would solder my connectors that go in the rack, these type, or I would solder the connectors that goes in the speaker boxes on my speak ons. And I don't do none of these anymore, so that eliminates a lot of my problems that I used to have. I remember going to an event once and the whole left side wouldn't work. And I changed the, the main cable, speaker cable going to that, to that column and it still wouldn't work. I changed the two, three cables, the same problem. So I decided, okay, the problem must be in the box. When I opened the box up, all my cables, a, a, a few of my cables fell off. The soldering came off or whatever the case may be. Like I said, I'm not a professional solderer, so I don't know, you know, I don't know how to do it properly. So I just decided to get rid of it. So I don't use that anymore. So that's my pro tip. That's my pro tip as far as how I go to panel off my sound. Um, one thing I want to add to it is you want to also, if you're a DJ, you're not going to be able to use this. This is for like sound systems like myself. So if you're a DJ, you're not going to be able to use this. Um, but they sell plates like these. This one is for the speak ons. This one is for the speak ons like this. But they sell them where they could fit the smaller jacks, like these audio jacks. They sell a small with the smaller holes in it where these could fit. Sometimes it comes in two, two holes, sometimes it comes in four holes. So you decide if you want two input or if you want uh, just one left right input. All right, um, that's for the DJs. So you, if you got a, um, a Odyssey control case, you could cut a square out in it where this would fit. And then your panels, these, would just fit inside this panel. And that's for the DJs. Now, every sound person should own one of these. If you own a sound system, you should own one of these. And this is called a cable tester. The model number on this one is CBT 500 cable tester. And this, te this is gonna test just about every cable that we use. Um, at the very top, right here at the very top, you can see I got the eight conductor uh, speak on connectors. All you would do is connect one speak on cable here and one here, and you turn your tester on. I don't have any battery in here now, but you turn your tester on and it, it will tell you which connection is, is connected or which is not connected. If, if there's an issue or if there's a problem, you will find out here. You don't have to wait till you get to the venue to find out, oh, this cable doesn't work or this cable doesn't work. I'm gonna give you a good example right here. XLR cable, male on one end, Pull this up. And the female, I mean, female, this is the female right here, sorry. Female on one end and the male on the other end. You turn it on and you put it on 
It's gonna. It's got three pins in it. It's got three pins in it, so it's gonna show you a connection for three pins. So one, two, three is what's gonna light up. And um, if there's an issue with with this cable, if one, one and two and three is not gonna light up if it, if there's an issue. And if, if one doesn't connect, if one if one has a shorts in it, you shake the cable, make sure you see if the light flickers on, off and on, that will tell you if there's a shorts in it or not. And this is a beauty because you do every cable. This is a USB, uh, USB type B and a USB type A. You, most US cable, most USB cables comes with two in, a Type B and a Type A and on there. All right, so the Type B, plug it in. Type A, plug it in. Turn your tester on and put it on there. And uh, if there's any problem in the cable, you'll be able to see it. This is how you find out if you got a bad cable or not. Okay. You're gonna need one of these. It does everything, quarter inch. It's got quarter inch on there. It's got uh, XLR on there. It's got four, four conductor speak on, on there, both, on both ends. Got a male and a female on, on, on both sides. It's got coax on there. It's got USB on there. It's got ethernet on there. It's got, it's got everything on there. The only thing I don't see on here, actually it's right here, RCA. Your RCA is right here. RCA is right here. So it's got everything that you would need or everything that you would use on your sound system. So this would be the ideal tester. Again, it's the CBT500 cable tester. Go get yourself one of these, man. Uh, and that's it. So that's all I got for this one. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm trying to keep them short and spicy. So I hope you guys enjoy this video. I'll see you guys on the next one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whoa, oh, 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 yeah. Action sound. Yeah, 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 yeah. Whoa, oh, yeah, whoa, oh, yeah. Whoa, oh, yeah, whoa, oh, yeah. Desire to get a higher life, it's a no brand on road. Desire to get a higher, don't limit it, you're go about. Desire to get a higher life, it's a no brand on road. Life, it's a subject, ain't not an object, take a full control. 